So in our comprehension notebooks, we've already taken a look at being a word wizard and looking at the magic of words. And so now we're going to focus on the way language is used in the text that we read. We'll talk about literature. Really, literature is just any written work that we're reading. There are two ways then that language in general is used in literature, prose and poetry. Now, when we think about prose and poetry, prose and poetry present information with a purpose. They can create sensory images and tell a story. They can provide information to us. Um, so we can have works that persuade, inform, entertain us. But what makes poetry and prose different is how information is presented and usually that purpose. I don't like to think of poetry as a genre because we can have fictional poetry, we can have nonfiction poetry. Poetry rather is more of than how language is used. And so when we think about putting the two head to head, prose is really just how we talk. It's our ordinary spoken or written language. It's always arranged in sentences or even in paragraphs. It's language that often informs, shows, describes, or explains. Poetry, on the other hand, focuses primarily on emotions, language, and sensory images. Language is often used in unusual and beautiful ways. Great feeling and intensity can be packed in a few words. It often has roots in that strong oral tradition or storytelling. So the way that it sounds to the ear is important. And like music, poetry is intended to be experienced more than one time. So let's start with prose. Prose writing is writing that is just like we talk. We have a fiction sample and a nonfiction sample. I'm going to use a great writer, Ezra Jack Keats, to kind of use as a way to look at our examples. When we think about prose writing, it's like we talk. So he made a smiling snowman and he made angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great big tall heaping mountain of snow and slid all the way down. So these are just some examples of fictional prose writing. Now, in contrast, some nonfiction writing. This is a great treasury that I got also of uh, Ezra Jack Keats that has his complete stories. But what I love about this particular text is that there are some other writers who then offer some information. This particular piece was written by Eric Carle. And so it's informational, and yet it still writes or reads like we would talk. I'll come down to here. But most of all, I remember his generous spirit. He was an experienced professional who reached out to me, a greenhorn at the threshold of entering the world of picture book making. And oh, I will always remember his sparkling eyes. So this is nonfiction informational text, but it's still prose in structure. Now, when we think about poetry, a definition of poetry, it's just that form of writing that uses more compact language, often as patterns, we'll talk about verses, and then rhythm to express ideas and feelings. And I'm gonna ask for you to put these pieces of information in your notebook so that you can refer to them when we look more carefully at poetry. Now this is a wonderful book that was written in honor of Ezra Jack Keats and his creation of the snowy day. And so this particular poem is actually nonfiction. Andrea Davis Pinkney wrote this, and I'm just gonna to turn to one page here. Ezra Jack Keats gave us all a place, a face, a voice. Ezra Jack Keats gave us eyes to see. Let us celebrate the making of what it means to be. He dared to open a door. He awakened a wonderland. He brought a world of white suddenly alive with color. So you notice and when you're reading this that it isn't necessarily written the way we would talk. It's not like conversation. And so those are the big differences between poetry and prose. Now the final thing that I'm gonna have you add after you add more information about poetry and Things that, of course, we'll look for in any literature that we read. 
I'm going to ask you to add a part that connects to our poetry station. Sketch to stretch thinking. I often find that when I read a poem, it helps for me to stretch my thinking out by sketching what perhaps individual lines or those lines grouped together in stanzas might say. And so you should have a space in your notebook to practice with this poem. I'll be looking for your example of thinking here. And so that is the difference between prose and poetry.